everyone, and welcome back to my channel, Beauty in the Bible. If this is your first time here, welcome. If this is not your first time here, and you are returning, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about um, Noah and the animals entering the ark. Genesis 7. I have loved hearing from you guys and getting feedback from everyone. I do want to bring something up though that someone had commented on my channel. I am not King James strict. So I appreciate the King James for what it offers. But what I read from, and this is not, I'm not this version strict either, um, I read from the Christian Standard Bible. This is by Holman, so this is the HCSB. Now, this is not actually my favorite version to read from. My favorite version um, is the NASB, the New American Standard uh, Bible. And the reasons for that is that it's more literal than the King James, but it offers a easier-to-read text. So those are my thoughts. I don't think that one particular translation has value over the other. In fact, I think that if you take all of the versions and cross-check them, you do get this idea of what's consistent and what's not consistent. You can kind of get a good feel for what's legitimate based on what you see the most throughout all of the translations that you look into. And that being said, let's open with a word of prayer. As I said, we are reading from the Holman Standard Christian Bible for this particular series, but if you guys do want me to read from a different um, version for another series, we can do that as well. Um, maybe when we get to Exodus, we can switch it up. Just let me know what you guys want. All right, Father God, we thank you for your presence with us today. Thank you for the fellowship we've discovered on this channel with each other. Lord, I am so grateful that this is reaching people and touching people's hearts and that we're able to just bounce ideas off each other and um, ultimately glorify you. Father God, as we jump into chapter 7 of Genesis, let our minds be open and be reverent towards you. And I ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So this is the account of Noah and the animals entering the ark. Then the Lord said to Noah, Enter the ark, you and all your household. For I have seen that you alone are righteous before me in this generation. You are to take with you seven pairs, a male and its female, of all the clean animals and two of the animals that are not clean, a male and its female, and seven pairs, male and female, of the birds of the sky, in order to keep the offspring alive throughout the earth. Seven days from now I will make it rain on the earth forty days and forty nights, and every living thing I have made will wipe off the face of the I will wipe off the face of the earth. And Noah did everything the Lord commanded him. Noah was six hundred years old when the flood came and water covered the earth. So Noah, his sons, his wife, and his sons entered the ark because of the flood waters. From the clean animals, unclean animals, birds, and every creature that crawls on the ground, two of each, male and female, came to Noah and entered the ark just as God had commanded him. Seven days later, the flood waters came on the earth. In the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, the 17th day of the month, on that day, all the sources of the vast watery depths burst open, and the floodgates of the sky were opened. And the rain fell on the earth for 40 days and 40 nights. On that same day, Noah, along with his sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, Noah's wife, and his three sons' wives entered the ark with him. They entered it with all the wildlife according to their kinds, all livestock according to their kinds, and all the creatures that crawl on the earth according to their kinds, every flying creature, all the birds, and every winged creature according to their kinds. Two of every creature that has the breath of life in it came to Noah and entered the ark. Those that entered, male and female, of every creature, entered just as God has commanded him. Then the Lord shut them in. The flood continued for forty days on the earth. The water increased and lifted up the ark so that it rose above the earth. 
the water surged and increased greatly on the earth. And the ark floated on the surface of the water. Then the water surged even higher on the earth, and all the high mountains under the whole sky were covered. The mountains were covered as the water surged above them more than 20 feet. Every creature perished. Those that crawl on the earth, birds, livestock, wildlife, and those that swarm on the earth, as well as all mankind. Everything with the breath of the spirit of life in its nostrils, everything on the dry land died. He wiped out every living thing that was on the face of the earth, from mankind to livestock to creatures that crawl to birds of the sky, and they were wiped off the earth. Only Noah was left and those that were with him in the ark. And the water surged on the earth 150 days. So that is Genesis 7. Now I don't know about you guys, but I find it interesting that only two of the unclean animals were to be brought on the ark and the seven of the clean animals. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below why you think God did it that way. Um, is it for food? Was it um, just because we want the want, he wanted the clean animals to be able to procreate more? Um, just give me your thoughts. Let's talk about that because I, I think it's fascinating. Uh, that God only chose two of the unclean animals and seven of each of the clean animals. Um, and again, we are talking about pairs. So when God said two of, two pairs, a male and a female, so it's two males, two females, it actually ends up being four. And then likewise with seven pairs of clean animals, that ends up being 14. So that is my thoughts for the week. And on this chapter, let's have a conversation. Let's talk about it. So uh, if, is there anything you guys noticed uh, that we can um, bounce, bounce off each other? All right. And that is it for this video. I do have my Christmas tree up. I will share a little bit of that in another video. There's just something personal that happened to me in my life um, that has caused me to really be looking extra forward to this Christmas. So I was able to set up my Christmas tree a little bit early, about a week early, and I've been very much enjoying it. And then me and my husband are going to, and we're going to do the full decoration after Thanksgiving. So that's it for you guys. I hope you have a blessed Sunday and I will see you in the next one. Bye.